Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse. I want to talk with you guys today about the state of affairs in the country and also I'll just get right into it. Multiple news outlets who are like de facto liberal but are considered by you know the uninitiated clueless American populace to be moderate like USA Today, they're even posting now I'm gonna sit down because we're gonna have talk. They're even posting now that civil war in the United States is either imminent or underway. And so let's talk about this for a minute here. Um, USA Today posted an article, I think a couple days ago, which I'll link to in the description box below. But the question was being asked, are we essentially in a soft civil war right now? And the point here that I wanna make is all civil wars typically will start out in the initial phases as quote-unquote soft, meaning it will start out as just heated ret rhetoric, uh, a breakdown in dialogue, a breakdown in the functioning of the political process, things like that. We've been underway with this thing for years, if not decades. Um, but recently, what's happened, Chuck likes to show up, recently what's happened is that with the election of President Trump and with the ultimate failure of the Democrat Party, the de facto socialists now, you're not going to find a moderate Democrat anymore, right? Like, they're gone. They're long, long gone. Um, and the ones that are left that claim some sort of allegiance to a party that's 50 or 60 years old have got their head up there, you know what. So the ones that are essentially left in this party right now are at a minimum soft Trotsky-like socialists and the, the expectation that I have is that they are going to increasingly go more and more towards the Stalinist type of socialism, definitely Leninist, Stalinist style socialism. Um, and why do I think that? Why do I think it's headed this way? Because of what is being said right now by elected representatives, specifically Maxine Waters. This woman is off her rocker anyway. She's just a nasty, bitter you-know-what. But when you have, and I think this is important to take note, when you have elected officials that are fomenting and are supporting and are encouraging violence, despite what she says, you know, she had, they had a, a follow-up with her, you know, after she got rightly, rightly so, a lot of pushback and heat from it. Um, the follow-up that, you know, she got, she said, oh, I didn't do this. I didn't do this. I didn't call for violence. Bull. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. And people who are clued in can tell the difference between someone who's lying chronically, like what she does, and someone who just made a misstep, okay? Now, make no mistake about it. That woman meant every bit of what she said. And the reason why she meant it is because she's been able to essentially say whatever she wants to, to encourage, at the very minimum, stalking um, you know, for, for months, right? But she is moving now towards encourage, encouraging people towards forcible felonies, <laughs> all right? Um, you know, towards like harassment and physical violence and things like that, okay? So I think recently Chuck Schumer basically, you know, got in front of, a, you know, a session of the Senate and said, hey, not good. You can't say that. Yeah, he didn't, of course, condemn her directly, but the sort of veiled, we should all be nice here, let's all get along and respect the political process and all that, okay? I don't believe that. I don't believe that. What I think happens is that there's the official party line narrative that the news outlets will parrot, and then there's the real agenda, which is being pushed from the middle and from the bottom, and that's what they're doing. Now, the... Objective reality of the situation is as follows. The average American patriot slash American gun owner has shown immense restraint against the leftist tactics that we've seen for the past year, specifically with Antifa. Um, the average American patriot, the average American gun owner has shown restraint far and above what these people deserved. When you start to stalk people and you start to, from a, a political level, encourage the disruption of peace and the disruption of people's safe havens, namely their home. Now we start to encroach on, on castle doctrine here. And when you're encouraging mobs to show up at people's home where there's an overwhelming level of force, a mob of however many people versus one to two people in a home, now we're at disparity of force and now we're at potential for lethality here, okay? The, the preponderance of, of 
evidence would suggest that when you have a mob of people at a place who are chanting angry slogans, death to this, or, you know, uh, we're going to take somebody out, whatever. Okay, now we're, now we're into some pretty dicey territory and some hot water. This, let, let us be clear here, is being encouraged by an elected official who has not been officially reprimanded through the appropriate channels for breach of decorum, etc., which means there is a level, certainly, of approval by this from the Democratic Party and from the your average little neighborhood socialist. I think that what's going to happen is you're going to see for the first time, and we're setting up for it, a true civil war. And let's go back here for a few moments here. Let's evaluate the American Revolution. Was the American Revolution uh, a civil war? Oh, sort of. I mean, not, but not really. I mean, you had a secessionary movement away from Great Britain where the, the populace had in many cases a direct confrontation of, of loyalists, you know, Tories versus the, you know, the colonists, the patriots, the American revolutionaries. The Tories, the big government people, your, your, what would be your modern day Democrats, et cetera, were located at that time primarily in the cities, the coast, you know, the places where loyalist sympathies were at their, their highest were in places where people, of course, had the greatest amount of dependency upon crown, upon the government at that point. When you get into the war between the states, like, I'm not going to go into all of that, but the bottom line is it wasn't a true civil war. You don't have two factions warring for the same you know, control of a central government. In the words of Jefferson Davis himself, all we ask is to be let alone. We have a secessionary movement in much the same vein as the revolutionaries. And um, even if you evaluate the writings, the writings of the, the Confederacy, as the leaders of the Confederacy use the same language, the same vernacular as those of the Anti-Federalists during the, the American Revolution, right? But what we're looking at now is a de facto war for the same government. We have a party that is now out of power who is encouraging up insurgent Bolshevist-style tactics of intimidation, um, of outright violence in, in the most recent examples with Maxine Waters here, that is being adopted by the middle levels of the party, which would be what you saw at Red Hen with that you-know-what, Stephanie Wilkinson. I'm trying to keep this G-rated as I can, guys, but um, if you sense that I have a little bit of disdain and antipathy towards these people, you're darn right. Uh, they're the absolute lowest scum of the earth, and they are pitiful excuses for Americans. When I consider the number of people worldwide who would love to be functioning citizens here in the United States who love our Constitution, who love the Bill of Rights, who would, I won't say kill for the opportunity to be here, but would give an awful lot to be here to be good citizens. I, I can't help but feel anything but disgust and disdain for these people who call themselves Americans, um, but they're nothing, nothing but Bolsheviks. And so we're going to be facing, in many ways, a kind of hodgepodge hybridization, I think, in, in the months and weeks to come. The whites versus the reds during the, the, the Russian uh, Revolution is something that comes to mind. It's not exactly the same, of course, but this is not just a phenomenon here in the United States. This is a, a trend that you're seeing globally right now of an insurgent mob uh, communist type rule that is being encouraged by its leaders to break the rule of law and to intimidate via intimidation and potential violent tactics take what it wants by force to shame and destroy their political opposition it's happening here in the united states it's definitely happening in south africa we're looking at at similar things happening in europe there's a lot going on right now and so i think that what you'll see here is in many cases similar to your you know, classic civil wars, but I think whatever happens here is going to have vast ripple effects and echo effects throughout the globe. It could happen here first, or it could happen in other places first and then have the spread you know, throughout, throughout the rest of the world. But we should be very vigilant right now because when you have government officials that are encouraging their constituents to utilize violence against their political opponents, who by the way, have done them no personal harm or wrong, you should pay attention because typically you got a very, very short timeline. The eternity expanse and the past of history can vouch for this. You typically got a very short timeline when you see government officials that are advocating for violence against political opponents. So we should pay attention to that. And I don't care how much BS retraction Maxine Waters does, 
take a brief sampling of the past six months to a year of that woman's rhetoric and you'll see that she is a dyed in the wool communist um she she is very very much a violent violent person in her rhetoric for sure um but she's ultimately a coward because she's not willing to enact this violence herself what she's doing is encouraging people who are typically jobless and you know room temperature iq to enact this violence for her and we should be ready the American gun owner and the American patriot has shown incredible restraint, like I said, over the past few years. But when you get to the point where Bolsheviks, the political party, the Democrat party, is encouraging people to stalk Republicans, Trump supporters, constitutionalists, duly operating government agents who are operating, by the way, within the rule of law and not against the Constitution, when you've got the Democrat Party supporting this, you should pay attention. Timeline's getting short. Be ready, y'all. It's a great reason to be armed, to be capable and effective and ready. For now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off, and I'll see y'all later. Bye.